Now, I would like to start this uh, global ecological change and sustainable development. This is uh, the part of the advances in forest ecology. I think we have completed two units and the, for the remaining two units, I tried to cover all these aspects so that uh, you may get all those information. This will be a little short presentation for about uh, half an hour. So, I tried to put as much as information uh, as much information as possible and this will be a one way communication you could not i mean the, i could not hear what you have done this is a unusual kind of presentation but anyway so let us see the global ecological change and sustainable development what i did is mainly what are the major global uh, ecological problems how the uh, these are the land use changes and the degradation of natural ecosystems, loss of biodiversity, gaseous exchanges, increased biogenic gas gases of uh, like uh, CO2, CS, uh, chlorofluorocarbon, methane, oxides of nitrogen, alterations in the global carbon and the nitrogen cycles and ozone layer depletion. <coughs> so, you see why we have this global ecological changes. If you can look into past prehistoric era, the we were having only natural ecosystems like forests, grasslands, lakes and the rivers and the man, human beings, we were the part of the biota, we were interacting with the environment and the environment and the biota interaction was in harmony. If you can come to the Anthropocene era, after that man has become an independent component. Man has uh, evolved or separated himself from the biota and we are now impacting the biota as well as the environment and in turn we are getting affected by the changes in the biota and the environment. This is a kind of uh, interactions that we did and as a result we have this global ecological changes. What wrong has happened? What are the major drivers that affected these interactions that we would like to discuss, we would like to explain here in this uh, talk. And as a result of these changes, we have some croplands and urban ecosystems. These are the new ecosystems. Our natural ecosystems, they are shrinking and the urban ecosystems and the cropland ecosystems, they are keep on increasing during the course of time. And nowadays, man has become an invasive keystone species which are consuming more than 40 percent of the terrestrial net primary productivity. So, if you can have a look into the landscape, if the greenery part is there, if you can exclude the um, roads and the buildings and if we can put them uh, put ourselves into the forest, we can go to the prehistoric era, but we are in the current um, historic current era and therefore, we have buildings, we have separated ourselves from the ecosystems and the consequences are there with us. So, now you can just uh, go through the significance of the ecological systems. If you can just uh, take two systems, ecological systems and the economic systems. Ecological systems are driven by the solar energy. Economic systems are driven by exogenous energy. Ecological systems, they produce the raw material that ignites the economic systems. Ecological systems are efficient, they do not have any residuals of the toxics. Whereas, the economic systems, they have residuals, toxics and the wastes. And these natural ecosystems, ecological systems, they have the capacity to absorb these residuals, toxics and the wastes produced by the economic systems, but they have their own limits. When we are crossing that limit, then the problem arises. 
So, nature if we can take into consideration the nature has not produced any uh, toxic or the waste. But the who has produced the waste? This is the human being. We, we have produced the waste. So, if you can uh, look into the forest biodiversity, this is a multidimensional aspect of the biodiversity. If we are looking into a forest, it has certain trees, harps, shrubs, there is a ladder like, ladder -like arrangements. But if you can just finally observe, look into those uh, tr uh, the trees, we have different kind of the organisms, they subsides, they are taking shelter on the different canopy of the tree, even on the soil. If you can go down to the soil, there are various kinds of microorganisms, they exist within an environment. Uh, soil environment and they interact with each other and during this course of interactions they produce energy, organic matter, nutrients and that, in, that is being utilized by the plants for the proper functioning. So, if, if you can I mean they look into the atmospheric CO2 concentration, we have uh, three, three major pools one is the vegetative pool, atmospheric pool and the soil pool. Majority of the carbon is present in the uh, soil, ca soil carbon pool and a small amount of carbon is present in the atmosphere. However, the rate of change of carbon through photosynthesis and the grass respiration by the autotrophic plants and the animals that is almost equal. The fossil fuel conjump, uh, combust combustion and the cement production has related, resulted into 7.8 picogram carbon addition to the atmosphere every year. This makes additional carbon that has to be adjusted. We have to uh, and because of that the global change problem, global carbon problem is there. At one, uh, on one hand we are increasing the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. On the other hand, we are increasing the nitrogen concentration, we are converting the inert gas nitrogen from the atmosphere to the land. Nitrogen is a limiting gas, when it comes to the ecosystems, it affects the vegetation in a different way. If you can just look into the integrated effect of increasing atmospheric CO2 nitrogen deposition, increasing temperature as a result of increasing CO2 concentration and the soil water. It affects directly or indirectly the plant uh, above ground and the below ground productivity. It affects the quality and the quantity of the litter, uh, fine roots. It affects the soil organic matter dynamics, quantity and the quality, or the rate of root exudation and the microbial community that in turn as a result in together affects the above ground plant productivity, plant biomass and affects the environment and so, uh, certainly ultimately it affects the survival of the human beings because we are getting uh, various kind of the foods and the uh, um, services from the ecosystems. In Bindhan ecosystems, Nitrogen and phosphorus addition has been shown to promote grasses, proportion of grasses, rough grasses, increase nitrogen concentration in the herbaceous shoots in the first year, three foliage shows the nitrogen increase after third year, enhancement of fine root biomass, increase microbial biomass carbon and the nitrogen and the available nitrogen and the nitrogen mineralization rates in the soil it has certain consequences. There are certain species in the natural ecosystems. If they are given more nitrogen, they will be, they, certain species they may get favor and they may get uh, increase their abundances. However, certain other species they may get lose their dominance. In savanna ecosystems, responses were more uh, rapid than the forest. However, the responses were retained for a longer time in the forest than in the savanna. 
the effect of nitrogen uh, deposition was more pronounced than phosphorus. I generally believe that the tropical ecosystems of phosphorus limited. This study suggested that the tropical ecosystems too are limited by the nitrogen rather than the phosphorus because the phosphorus has little less impact on the natural ecosystems, natural and the derived ecosystems. So, should I should I continue? That's okay. So, if you can. Um, yeah. No, should I continue? Yeah. I think you can continue. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. Mm, they, if you can just look at this table, uh, the nitrogen fertilization, nitrogen and phosphorus fertilization experiment has been uh, done in the Bindian dry tropical region, and we found that the the rough grasses has increased the abundances after the nitrogen loading. You can just see the red figures and the yellow figures after the fertilizer uh, phosphorus additions. The dicots, other dicots, they have increased their dominances. Yes, uh, the grasses has increased. I mean the the dominances, but they are almost similar. They are not that much increasing. So, if you can I mean, look into the ecosystem services, why these ecosystems and their abundances are important, if we can just uh, change the relative abundances of the species in the forest ecosystems, the, we will get uh, the, their uh, services produced by these natural ecosystems will be getting affected. So, what are the ecosystem services? Earth's biota regulates numeral, numerous fluxes of energy and the matter including carbon uptake, nutrient cycling and oxygen production. When if we can measure these at the local scale, these rates are referred to as the ecosystem processes and the lead to ecosystem services. We have various kind of ecosystem services, products and the services received by the ecosystems products or whatever the products that we have like in terms of medicine, food, timber, uh, timber or textile whatever that is being traded in the market and they have some quantification and the evaluation. However, the services that we get out of the ecosystems that has not been traded in the market and that has not been even measured and therefore, we do not have the proper evaluation. Recently, in the coronavirus, uh, due to the coronavirus infection, an old man, 93 years old, in Italy, he was charged with a 500 rupees, uh, 500 euro, for the charge of ventilator in the, in his hospital, and the person was crying, and the doctor was thinking that he is not able, to, I mean, he is not uh, uh, trying to pay 500 euro, and therefore he is crying. Then the old gentleman he told, no, I am not crying that I could not pay 500 uh, euros for the ventilator, but rather I am worried that how much I have taken in 93 years from the natural ecosystems for free, for which we I have not given anything to the nature. Now our responsibility is to serve something to the nature, because the oxygen that we are taking from the uh, nature, free of cost. But we do not have, uh, we never realize the value of those oxygen that is produced by the trees. So, now we can come to the ecosystem services. Biodiversity and the human health out of 118 uh, potentially drugs prescribed, uh, out of uh, 118 out of uh, top 150 prescribed drugs in the United States, 74 are based on the plants. 18 on fungi, 5 percent on bacteria and 3 percent on the uh, vertebrates. 
all from the snakes. Of the top 10 prescribed drugs in the US, 9 are based on the natural products. In 1990, scales, uh, uh, sales of the prescription drugs with active ingredient of the plant origin were about 15,500 million dollar. Losing one species a day means losing many potentially valuable drugs in the years, every year. Look at the value of the ecosystem services that we are getting indirectly, not directly. So, this value when it was calculated by uh, the Costanja and the co-workers in 1997 for the first time, it was 33 trillion US dollar and it was almost more than the global GDP at the time. Then again, the same worker in 2011, they have tried to calculate the ecosystem services and they got the value 125 trillion US dollar. And 2011 again, the world GDP was 75 trillion US dollars, which was almost one and a half times or more than one and a half times of the <coughs> GDP. So, whatever we are getting from the nature for free, if we can just value them, if we can put a cost on that, then if you can see how our GDP is growing. Whether our GDP is growing, the question is whether our GDP is growing on the cost of uh, natural, uh, natural ecosystems or on the cost of the exploitation of the natural ecosystems that we do. So, what are the major issues of the ecological crisis? Ecological crisis or rising human population, sinking natural resources, deteriorating uh, environmental quality. What are the major issues? Degradation of the ecosystems, biodiversity depletion, deterioration of quality of soil, air and the water, global change phenomenon, sustainable development. So, if you can I mean, lead into the degradation of natural ecosystems, population pressure leads to degradation of terrestrial and the aquatic ecosystems, fragmentation and reduction in the plant cover reduction in the biodiversity and the animal densities, soil degradation and the erosion, redu uh, reduction, reduced productivity of the land, conversion of from one land use to the another land use like forest, natural forest to the agricultural lands. This is a major degradation that is occurring for the food production practices. And as a result, ecosystem is getting imbalance. Disruption of the natural balance of the ecosystem as a result of the nature, natural or the human disturbances, there is a loss of biodiversity disrupting ecosystem interaction. So, if you can look at the donkey hanging on the cart, the cart has no balance now, it has become imbalance. If you are putting a load on one side of the ecosystem, we are not making the ecosystem in a balance, in a harmony. And therefore, we have this kind of problem. And the biodiversity is very important for the proper functioning of the ecosystems. If we are losing the biodiversity, there is a certain threshold level of the biodiversity maintenance in the ecosystem. If below which all the ecosystems may collapse, they may not work properly. If you can look into, I am not going to explain it much, but I think it is very clear. If you can see, the rise in, rise in the human population, rise in the GDP, rise in the um, damming of the rivers, rise in the water use, water use, rise in the CO2 level at the atmosphere, rise in the global biodiversity loss, everything. If you can just look it, look into it, there is a sharp rise after 1950, after the advancement. At, after we have, I um, mean, the we have been looking for the comfortable lifestyle. So, in the Anthropocene era, there are prediction, predictions that 40 percent of the known oil reserves exhausted by the humans in last 150 years that took hundreds of millions of the years to generate about 50 percent land surface, 
transformed affecting the biodiversity, soil biology and the climate. Concentration of clinic, uh, climatically important gases have substantially increased. 50 percent mangrove removed and the wetland reduced by one half. Extinction rate increasing sharply. 50 percent of the all accessible fresh water is appropriate uh, is appropriate is not used uh, for human use and the water reserves are being getting down. And if you can just look into the population explosion, the increase in the population, how we can just go ahead. You see the majority of the population is increasing the less, less developed countries, not in the more developed countries, their population is almost balanced. The population is increasing the less developed or the least developed countries. World population is predicted to be 9.4 billion in 2050 and uh, we are now more than uh, 7 billion. India is supposed to overtake China by 2050. If the situation comes, how we can sustain our natural resources, the problem may sustain. The predictions for India, the dry lands frequent 38 percent drop in the per capita water availability by 2050. By 2100 sea level rise 47 centi 40 centimeter and 50 million people would be displaced in the coastal area. 70 percent fall in the feet yield if the temperature rises by about half degree Celsius. By 2035 food grain production may fall by 30 percent. Vector borne diseases may increase. Water stress about 2 billion people living under the moderate to severe water stress will increase to 4 billion by 2025. India annual water availability per capita cubic centimeter in 1951 was 2500, in 1991 2200, in 2001 1820, it is supposed to 1340. Uh, and by 2050, it will be 1140. Minimum required requirement is 1700, uh, below which there is a water stress. This is diminishing, uh, diminishing for, uh, frontier forest reserves, original uh, frontier forests, and the current frontier forest. If you can look into the situation. Tropical forest loss, 350 million hectare have been deforested per year, 500 million hectare of secondary and primary forests have been degraded. According to Forest Survey of India, in 2009, uh, 2009 the forest cover in India in increased by 5 percent over the past decade, but most of the increase that has occurred due to the plantation activities. Whereas the natural forest, native forest in India have declined by 1.5 to 2.5 percent. Threatened by extinction or already extinct by 2010, around 13 percent uh, birds, 25 percent mammal, 41 percent uh, amphibians, 22 percent uh, reptiles, 33 percent fishes. Uh, and uh, around 32 percent gymnosperms. Biodiversity banking attach value to the component of the biodiversity and the services they provide. Biodiversity banking allows accumulation of tradable biodiversity credits to derived monetary benefit by the stakeholders if they commit to enhance the biodiversity value of the land. Conservation strategies and the priorities, how we can conserve them. Maintenance of the essential ecological processes, we need to maintain the essential ecological processes and the life support systems on which the human survival and the economic activities depends. We need to preserve, preserve the species and their genetic resources. We need to sustain them, we need to sustainably use 
species and the ecosystems which supports millions of the rural population communities as well as major industries. Of course, also we need to have long term ecological research network stations, uh, long term ecological research uh, um, researchers in India through making a lo international long term ecological networking. In Mizoram, we are going to start this year through a major uh, project funded by the Department of Science and Technology. We, will, we would like to monitor all these ecological changes in the major forest types of Mizoram at four or five sites, how the ecological changes are taking place, how the meteorological parameters are changing at that particular place and how they are uh, affected by the um, particular uh, drivers so and so on. So hopefully in the future to come, we would like to come up with certain data on this. Now I have to come to the major sustainability issues. What are the sustainability? Meeting current human needs without compromising needs of the future generation. This was for the first time defined by the Brundtland Commission in 1987. After that, the element of sustainability World Commission of Environment and the Development in 1997, 1987, they have formulated this. If we can make this pyramid, if we can give prior share to the environment, economy and the society, like biodiversity material uh, under the environment, biodiversity material energy, biophysical interactions, under the economy, money, uh, money, capital, employment, technical growth, investment, market forces will be coming here in the society, human societies, cultural, linguistic, ethnic, equity and so on. If you can keep all those in harmony, we can make the ecosystem sustainable. So, healthy community model, we have to make a harmony between the society, economy, environment. If everything is healthy, we can have a healthy community, healthy society. Everything should be healthy. <coughs> Look at this uh, well-being index, barometer of the sustainability. If the well-being of human being changes or, or the ecosystem well-being it changes as a function of human well-being. If we put it in the green in the last corner, if we can maintain 100 percent well-being of the human being and 100 percent well-being of the ecosystems, natural ecosystems, then certainly this will be the ecosystem will be sustainably good sustainable. If we are decreasing it, we are compromising with the well-being of the uh, ecosystem, we are maintaining the well-being of the human uh, beings, then it will be almost okay, medium, poor and bad, unsustainable. So, we have to be careful about that. What are the problems of such sustainability? The problems of sustainability, depletion of finite natural resources like fuels, soil, minerals, uh, minerals, species, overuse of renewable resources, forests, fish and wild, wildlife, fertility, public funds, pollution, air, water and the soil, inequity, economic, political, social and the gender issues, species losses, endangered species and the species. <coughs> sustainability solutions. What are the solutions for the sustainability? Cyclic material use, copy natural cycles. When the nutrients are generated in the regenerated in the soil through biological processes, these nutrients are being taken up by the plants. After the death, these nutrients are returned to the soil 
and again undergo decomposition process getting regenerated and again taken up by the plants. The way how the nutrients are recycled within the ecosystems all the nutrients are tightly coupled within the plant vegetation and the soil uh, vegetation and the soil systems. So, there is a less amount of the nutrients that is getting out of the systems when the natural ecosystems are converted to the man made ecosystems or derived ecosystems most of the nutrients are getting washed out or leased down the below the profile. So, if you can copy the natural recycling of the materials and the nutrients we can make the system sustainable safe reliable energy conservation renewable energy substitution interim measures life waste interests, health, creativity, communication, coordination, appreciation, learning, intellectual and the spiritual development. If we can make everything in the harmony, we can make the system sustainable. If you can look at what is going on at the figure 3 um, circles at the left which is cut. We are giving major emphasis on the economy, then the second emphasis on the society and the third emphasis on the environment. System is not sustainable, this is a traditional decision making. Now, what is needed is a smart decision making, ecosystem balanced decision making. Look at the right hand side, ecosystem, economy, environment, society everything is given due consideration, equal benefits, equal sharing and then we can make the ecosystem healthy. So, terrestrial ecosystem and ecological sustainability, ecological sustainability is meeting the human needs without compromising ecosystem health and ensuring unhindered flow of ecosystem services challenges to develop and apply ecological theory to the management of terrestrial ecosystem in consonance with the needs and the aspiration of people. Evolve region specific and site specific guidelines and eco technologies for restoration rehabilitation of disturbed ecosystems. Develop approaches to integrate ecology, economics and sociology, sociological science we need to quantify economic cost of the ecosystem damage and the environmental cost of the integrate, integral part of the development cost. Northeast, looking at the northeastern region if we can come. So, we have variety of organisms here, this is very diverse. We have variety of uh, climatic conditions, we have very high rainfall lot of resources are there, but the major problem that what we are facing, why we are not sustainable. If you can look at this uh, vulnerability index, Assam and the Mizoram are the most vulnerable states. How the vulnerability state, I mean the state index has been calculated. It is based on the state which have low per capita income, low area under the irrigation and the low area under the forest per thousand households and high area under the open forest. This makes the high vulnerable scores. So, in terms of vulnerability, vulnerability how Mizoram and the Assam they are highest and the some reasons of I mean the Sikkim and other they have uh, they are in a better position even the Manipur, Meghalaya they are in a more better position. So, why if we have lot of resources why we could not uh, make it in a proper way. So, if we can document the unique biodiversity of the biogeographic junction of the uh, Indian and the oriental land masses or northeast this is the center of origin of many crops that is Musa, Cetrus and has high number of endemic species. We need to identify, characterize these different species of orchids, underutilized fruit species, endemic fishes, ethnopharmaceutical, uh, ethnopharmacological plants, 
edible insects etc then we can identify identification of the unique endemic species with potential of bioprospecting barcoding of uh, species and they are making a database then if we can conjure these species or of orchids medicinal plants edible fruits and vegetables edible insects diversity microbes endemic fishes mollusks then by prospect them identify characterize and document plant insects fishes mollusks etc isolate identify and characterize these microbes their dna tissue bank for their preservation and then medicinal plants orchids novels and in that case we can come up i think we can come to this slide and to undertake the capacity building we can build the capacity we can train the human resource on the conservation and sustainable utilization of the natural resource to local youth and the college students entrepreneurship development through business incubation induction and the mid career skill upgradation program for scientists and the technical stops in cutting edge areas of research in bio resources documentation conservation and the utilization we can explore and have provide hands on training to the doctoral post doctoral students in the area of the research related to the germplasm germplasm conservation food security and so on so in the last if you can uh, generate technology packages for employment generation and the economic progress of the region we can have business incubation for providing value addition of the underutilized fruits product from the edible insects products from the fishes and the mollusks development of the technology packages and the training packages for organic uh, cropping cash crop rearing of the fish silk worm and the other edible insects licensing of technology for the industrial development through establishment of industries in the public and the partner um, private partnership mode so we can generate some employment and economic progress of the region never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world indeed it is the only thing that ever has if you can so thank you all and i hope i think you can get some idea about how the changes has taken place in the global uh, global change changes has taken place what are the responsible drivers how we can manage them sustainably so thank you